So you want to tent your boat, uh, your gel coat, say you have a repair, maybe you're a DIY guy, or if you're even in a repair shop and you're struggling with tenting a gel coat. So every single boat is different. Pretty much right here, I started my first dab working left to right, and then second row to third row. Um, that way I'm not going all the way down the boat. So what I did is so every boat's going to be different. Uh, they're, they're all, they all have different tents. No boat is one color and no boat is going to be the same color. So even if you were to order gel coat from example, Spectrum Color, which is an amazing company, say this boat is a 05 model and I order from Spectrum, they're going to have those, those two or three formulas of pigment in that gel coat. So it might be close. So say, say they send gel coat to me and this is the dab from them. Say it's a lot more white. So the, the boat ages over time. As soon as they leave manufacture, they're attacked from the environment, attacked by the UV light, everything. Um, and they, they slowly change color over time. That's why it's so critical to keep, keep your boat washed and ceramic coated. Keeping it protected is key. That way it can withhold the UV sun damage. So for this boat, I started adding uh, iron oxide and yellow and some black. So as this color transitioned, I started seeing a hue of red. And I'll show you that right here. So this second color has red iron oxide. So it's like brown and red mixed together and they put it in a pigment. So as I mixed it up, I put it on here. I was okay, well that's way too pink. So I started throwing black in it because black is gonna take out some of that pink color. So I just kept going until it got closer and closer and just more black, more uh, red iron oxide, yellow oxide, chrome yellow. And then once we got down here to the third row, you'll start seeing where I, I smeared it with my finger right here just to see how that color transitions so this color it looks pretty close so most people that would be colorblind they probably wouldn't see this whole bottom row um, so this one it was not only too bright but it was too gray from adding black and then i went to this one it was still too bright not enough red Kept transitioning. This one's a really close color. This one's really close. But then when you when you get over here, I mean, you can't really see these other than where I smeared it on. Uh, so this is a probably a 99% match. Uh, and I got this one right here. That was my last final uh, test spot. So between these two colors, they are pretty close. This one I had to go a little bit more black because this one had too much red in it. And keep in mind, even if you have a 100% perfect match, it, it will darken a little bit if you don't catalyze correctly. Uh, different patch aids, different wax additives, they will uh, change color during the cure, especially your reds and your blues. So for this one, since white doesn't change too much, um, I'm going to shoot it with one-to-one -one Duratec and catalyze it probably 1.8 to 2% range and let it cure for 12 hours. What I'm going to show you guys today is a little bit of tinting gel coat. So I have a boat at a marina that the uh, pulpit had been damaged. They ran into something. So this piece here was already broken, I mean, it's just dangling, so I went ahead and ripped it off so I can come back to the shop and tent it. Uh, so I've been working on this tent here, and it's it's very close. I might have to add a little bit of yellow. So I started with a base white, and when I first looked at the boat, it appeared to be just a whole bunch of uh, brown and yellow, but that wasn't the case. It actually has a red hue to it, so 
I've got a color lot here, just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. And you can see, maybe not on camera, but it's got a tiny bit of a red tint to it, aside from the uh, yellow and brown. So I've got a really close match here. And keep in mind, when you, when you add these pigments, uh, it's always best to thin your gel coat and thin the pigments a little bit so that it doesn't sit up in the cup and uh, just get darker by letting it sit there. So anytime I, I'm tenting a boat, say I've got a batch of it right here that I'm going to be uh, using to spray the boat with for the repair, I'll let it sit overnight. Um, I always let it sit for at least an hour, uh, thinned out, so that the uh, that's the true color. And a lot of times I'll, I'll I'll put it in a clean cup, so that you know no no pigment that's stuck on the stick left over or from the sides gets down in there and changes the color that I don't know about. So what I'm going to show you guys today is pretty much I'm going to PVA this little get glass piece here and uh, spray a small section of it on there and show you guys how to release that when it's done. That way you can hold that little piece of gel coat you tinted up to the boat and see how, how, how well it matches. It's best to use a mold release wax, like a paste wax, but I don't have any currently. So we're just gonna go with a couple rounds of this PVA. So this may be a little much. So all I'm gonna do is smear it on here. Kind of like when you're waxing a car, what you'll want to do is, you know, smear it in and then let it sit, let it haze up. PVA is a uh, open air cure chemical and I believe it's chemical resistant as well. So if you ever are doing a repair and you use PVA and you try to wipe it off with acetone, it won't work. You've got to use uh, soap and water or at least water. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then I'll catch you guys right back. Okay, so now that this thing has had time to dry, uh, I wiped it off already. So now what we're gonna do is take some of this gel coat, put in a little medicine cap. It don't have to be much. You don't have to add any wax to it, but I always like to, whether it's patch aid or just a couple drops of Duratec. That should be plenty. That way it's just a hair easier to take off. I got my handy dandy tongue depressor. I'm just gonna break it in half. Some of these don't like to break in half, but. So I got just a tiny drop of wax in here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of MEKP. This is your hardener. So it is about 40 degrees. So I added about eight eight drops it calls for uh, 15 about roughly 15 drops per ounce but it also depends on your application and this I just needed to get a little bit hard so that I can uh, peel it off of this uh, plexiglass you can use real glass also Make sure you get it all off the sides. You want to make sure it's mixed all the way in there. Normally I'll spray some of this on there 
with a pre ball but I'm just gonna literally pour this on here just a little bit enough to get some coverage so I'm gonna take it Yes, Joko is self-leveling, so this will kind of level out a little bit. I kind of want it to be, I don't know, about two inches in diameter, so about about like that. And then I'll literally just let it sit here until it fully cures, and uh, then we'll go from there. So now this thing has cured. It's all hard for the most part. Uh, so we're gonna pop it off. Here. Use a razor blade. This one has gel coat on it. So So it looks like the uh, the wax itself wasn't wiped off. I didn't wipe it off the best, but it just kind of gives you an idea. Uh, and it's not all the way cured yet, so I guess I released it a little early. But that's pretty much an idea of how you can do this. It's one way. Another way is using packaging tape and just using uh, wet gel, put it on there. Squeeze out the packaging tape, make sure you get it all flat, the gel coat. Um, there's several different methods to doing this, but this is uh, this is what I do when I'm doing a really big job and I want to make sure the color is going to be pretty much perfect. So after I move forward from this, if I feel like it's kind of like a good color, I will actually spray a tiny Thank spot. Thank you for on the tuning boat in and, and this is go how ahead to and refinish that tiny spot, see how that color transitions.